Now at 5 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, the search continues for a father and son from Calhoun County whose boat capsized in Lavaca Bay. Plus, FEMA is ramping up preparations on the crossroads ahead of this year's record-breaking hurricane season. And severe weather leaves behind damage in parts of East Texas. Well, the heat is definitely on and it's going to get a little bit hotter. As a matter of fact, the temperature will go up. The humidity may come down. That's going to help help us out. Now we are looking longingly at this shower activity on either end. Will it uh, actually get into the crossroads? We'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Day one of Hunter Biden's gun trial begins today with opening statements. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon and thanks for being with us. I'm Karina Garcia. The search for a father and son continues on Magnolia Beach. 25 News Now reporter Adarius McCormick knows more about the search party for them. Adarius, what's going on? Benedicto Jaramillo and his son Angel went missing Saturday morning as they went on a shrimping on Magnolia Beach. Their 40 foot shrimping vessel that capsized during a storm was removed from the channel today. Port Lavaca Wave reports Hunter Hadley's Quest, a nonprofit organization who works on these kinds of projects, leads the search with the father and son's family and the Port Lavaca community. However, the Coast Guard suspended its search Sunday morning. Hunter Hadley's Quest shared the difficulty in these projects. A GoFundMe is set up to aid the family as costs for a search are high. The search party also requires supplies like flashlights, batteries, and more. Back to you, Karina. Adarius, thank you. A Tivoli man was transported to the hospital after a crash in Referio County Monday. DPS reports 42-year-old Robelin Riviela was traveling westbound on State Highway 239 when the 1998 Chevrolet Silverado pickup he was driving left the roadway and went down an embankment. Then it rolled over on its passenger side. DPS says the man was ejected from the vehicle during the rollover and was not wearing a seatbelt. A 28-year-old man was arrested by Victoria Police Tuesday. Damien Rodriguez of Victoria faces five charges, including unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon and tampering with physical evidence with intent to impair. He is in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of a $63,000 bond. Now, with a record-breaking hurricane season predicted this year, FEMA is getting prepared to help as many people as possible across all possible storm-impacted areas. Latanya Hopes with FEMA says the agency has already rolled out their preventative mitigation plan, which involves hiring additional staff, securing office locations in possible impact areas, and using lessons from learned from past hurricane seasons to better help those that are likely going to need it this season. Mitigation focuses on prevention. So for places that may have um, incurred damages, serious damage during last hurricane season, there's tons of work that's already going on to help in preparation should there be a need to respond. FEMA staff urges everyone's imp everyone that's been impacted to apply for benefits. Many new programs have been now introduced that will help make more people eligible for benefits. So here is your viewer poll. You can scan that QR code right there on your screen to vote. The question is, what other additional measures should FEMA take to better prepare for hurricane season? Should they increase stockpiles of emergency supplies, invest in advanced weather monitoring technology, more financial support for disaster preparedness, improve communications systems, enhance public awareness campaigns, expand training programs for first responders, or strengthen infrastructure in vulnerable areas. We want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part, and we're going to have an update on 25 News Now at 6. And now let's take a look at your forecast with First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Perez. Well, thank you very much. The tropics are still quiet, uh, nothing organized, but we're watching it very carefully. For us, obviously, the heat is the big story. In fact, as we get into this uh, end of this week, we're looking for hotter temperatures. What's happening, of course, is that big dome down there. It's beginning to slowly creep up into our area. We'll take a look at that, and we'll take a look at the tropics coming up in just a few minutes, and we'll talk about how hot it'll be by the time we get to the weekend. All that later. Back to you. Mac, thank you. 
East Texas was hit by severe weather on Monday. The storms brought down trees and power lines, leaving thousands of residents without power. Wind gusts reached up to 80 miles per hour during the height of the storm. Several buildings and homes in the area were also damaged, but so far no one is reported hurt. Now, President Biden has signed an executive order to curb the influx of migrants at the U.S. southern border. The border, or rather the order, temporarily shuts down asylum requests once the average number of daily encounters between official ports of entry tops 2,500. It will reopen when it falls to 1,500. The executive action also makes it impossible for migrants to seek asylum if they cross the border illegally. The order does have some exceptions, including for unaccompanied children. In 2018, the Trump administration tried to enact similar border restrictions, but the courts blocked them. Today, opening statements began in the trial against Hunter Biden as a jury weighs whether to convict him on three felony charges related to his efforts to obtain a gun in 2018 during a time of drug addiction. An alternate had to step in this morning after one juror said they lived too far away and begged to be dismissed. For the first time in history, the son of a sitting president is on trial. Hunter Biden facing three felony charges walking into court today, hand in hand with his wife, Melissa Cohen. A jury of 12 was seated Monday, but this morning the judge announcing one juror was excused, saying getting to court each day would be too difficult. With an alternate in place, jurors hearing opening statements from both prosecutors and defense attorneys. Prosecutors say in October of 2018, Hunter Biden illegally purchased a Colt revolver while he was addicted to drugs and lied about his addiction when he filled out this federal form. But his lawyers have argued that the form was not clear about the terms user or addict, so their client did not knowingly lie, saying Biden had just completed a 12-day rehab program. The defense also suggesting President Biden's brother, Jimmy Biden, will testify to explain that period of time. Prosecutors are expected to call an FBI agent as their first witness, who will likely present several of Hunter Biden's text messages and excerpts from his 2021 memoir, part of the prosecution's evidence as they try to prove Biden and knew he was an addict when he bought the gun. The jury includes several people with family members who suffered from addiction or who owned firearms, including a man whose father died by gun violence and whose brother was sentenced to prison for drug crimes. The First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, and Hunter's sister Ashley also returning to court today to support him. Despite the delay this morning, the judge expects the case to go at least through June 14th, with deliberations possibly stretching into the following week. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The city of Point Comfort issued a boil water notice this morning. The notice is in effect until further notice. Authorities tell us there was an issue with the water treatment plant and the water tower because there was low pressure from that water tower. Now, the Victoria ISD has a special meeting Wednesday, June 5th to review proposals for a search form as it looks for the next superintendent. They will select the search firms they want to meet with at the June 10th board meeting. The meeting is at 330 at 102 Profit Drive. Now, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. For now, stay with us. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland testified today in the defense of the Justice Department. We hear his defending statement straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. Also ahead, millions of people in parts of the U.S. are bracing for intense heat today. Hi. I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs with the Victoria Police Department. Victoria Crime Stoppers is seeking information about an attempted theft from a person. On April 4, 2024, at about 2.24 p.m., an unknown male attempted to steal property from a person at the 2800 block of North Navarro Street. The person was able to retain possession of the property and the male subject ran away from the location. The offender is described to be a dark, complected, skinny-built male approximately five foot nine inches tall, wearing a dark colored baseball cap, a white long sleeve t-shirt, blue jeans, and dark colored shoes. There was a Texas shaped emblem on the back of his shirt. If you have any information about this attempted theft, please call Victoria Crime Stoppers at 361-572-4200. You can also submit a tip by using the P3 tip app on your Android or Apple device, or by visiting our website at www.crimestoppersvictoria.com. All tips are anonymous 
And if you give information that leads to an arrest or charges being filed, you could earn a cash reward. With Victoria Crime Stoppers, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs. Fires set off by Hezbollah rockets are spreading throughout northern Israel. On Monday, rescue teams battled the flames to get them under control. Multiple reports confirmed several homes caught fire, and many Israelis who live in towns near the Lebanon border evacuated months ago given the escalating fighting between Israel and Hezbollah. The Israeli military sent equipment and soldiers to help contain the flames, which spread quickly due to hot and dry weather. At least six military reservists were hurt. Now, Attorney General Merrick Garland defended the Justice Department in a House oversight hearing today. In his testimony, Garland hit back at House Republicans threatening to hold him in contempt of Congress. He also pushed back on conspiracy theories surrounding former President Donald Trump's recent conviction. Garland said he and the DOJ would not cave to threats of violence and they will remain committed to justice and the law. I will not be intimidated and the Justice Department will not be intimidated. We will continue to work, do our jobs free from political influence and we will not back down from defending democracy. House Republicans are moving to hold Garland in contempt over the DOJ's refusal to share audio tapes of President Biden's interview with special counsel Robert Ur as part of his investigation into the president's handling of classified documents. Transcripts of that interview were shared with lawmakers. Garland has refused to share the tapes on the grounds that doing so could compromise future investigations. Now, as the temperatures rise, so does the risk of heat-related illnesses. Certain medications can make a person even more vulnerable when it's hot outside. High temperatures, heat, and humidity can all affect the body, but some medications can pose an added danger. Medications that decrease the body's ability to shunt blood out to the skin and then sweat uh, off that fluid to help release a lot of that heat um, that's that's really why they predispose to heat illness overall. Emergency medicine doctor Kevin Watkins with Cleveland Clinic says medications that can cause heat intolerance include diuretics, heart medications like blood pressure drugs, antihistamines, decongestants, antibiotics, antidepressants, and antipsychotics. We worry most about heat stroke. Um, especially when there are heat waves. Everyone can protect against extreme heat by wearing loose fitting clothing, keeping your house cool by covering windows, finding air conditioning in a public place if your home doesn't have it, avoiding strenuous activities outdoors in high heat, and staying hydrated.
if you get dehydrated, you're, you're really hurting your body's ability to get rid of that heat as well. Heat can also degrade medications, so experts say make sure to store medicine properly. In a place that is, you know, away from sunlight, that is cool, you know, in a bathroom, uh, you know, ideally in a closed area. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. A heat dome is scorching parts of the U.S., putting millions of people in the southwest under heat advisories today. Forecasters say it could get dangerously hot in states farther north and east later in the week. Some areas could set new record highs. Temperatures also mean higher air conditioning costs. Any report predicts a sweltering summer will force Americans to pay about a third more for energy this June through September than in 2019. The heat is also increasing the risk of wildfires. Now, if you missed Storm Prep 2024, here are some other dates and times that you can catch the show on KVU Saturday, June 22nd at 4:30, KMOL Sunday, June 23rd at 11:30, KVCT Sunday, June 23rd at 12:30, and of course at KTS Saturday, June 22nd at 11 a.m. And now here is meteorologist Mac Bettis. Thank you very much. Well, good afternoon. The heat is definitely the big factor, as uh, Karina was mentioning. It's not only us, but it's pretty much the entire desert southwest. So, yeah, in the deserts are going to be moving into record breaking temperatures. Pretty amazing. Uh, there are a couple of areas of stormy weather. Will it affect us? Uh, well, we'll talk about it coming up after this. Well, good afternoon, everybody. 92 degrees right about now. It feels like 106. Uh, again, we do the heat wave, or the heat index, not to make it sound worse, but just to tell you how that affects your body. So it's like this. Um, you wouldn't want to have a 106 degree internal body temperature, right? Your mom would say, you've got a fever. Your body's very hot. Well, that's what happened. happens to you outdoors in this heat because you're perspiring to try and cool down but the perspiration does not evaporate, so it keeps going and going and going, uh, trying very hard to cool itself, but it's not happening. So that's what we, uh, I, I guess you can say the heat index is kind of like your uh, body temperature. Uh, so consider you don't want 106, all right? Uh, 93 is our official high today. The average high should be about 91. Our record is 99 <clears throat> for the date. Last night, we were looking at some stormy weather out here. And again, <coughs> pardon me, <clears throat> That's, it, it plays a, a mess on the microphones there. 
Um, there's another uh, day of stormy weather down in northern uh, Mexico and basically in Nuevo Leon. And that activity drifted into south deep, deep south Texas last night. Uh, we're going to see that again, but it's just not going to come up into our area because two things. A, uh, we don't have the mountains. Uh, B, the sun will probably start going down and then all that sort of falls apart. But again, the uh, summer is right here. See all this red stuff? That's summer. That is the uh, subtropical high. It is slowly moving up. And when it gets a little bit farther north, even the stormy weather up here is going to go north because uh, nothing happens under this. Rarely uh, do we see any kind of stormies like this, but these are caused because the Gulf air is hitting the mountains of uh, Monterey. You know Monterey? Uh, those mountains trigger off a lot of stormy weather and then gets caught up in the upper winds. And it'd be nice if we could get a little bit out of it. But uh, and it's only June and we really going to have to figure out how to deal with this. So stay hydrated, take plenty of breaks. OK, um, limit strenuous outdoor activities. In other words, kids want to play. We understand. But if they're playing out there at noon, one o'clock, two o'clock, their cheeks are going to get red and they don't know when to stop playing. So you just say time to take a break. Uh, check on the elderly and pets and maybe neighbors who may, believe it or not, or not have uh, proper air conditioning. So that's still possible in today's world. Uh, and find a public space with, with uh, AC. So go to the mall, go to HEV, go to Walmart, you know. Just go in there, walk around, buy some gum or something, and uh, cool down because it's, it's going to be like this for, what, another three months? Okay. So we uh, look again at stormy weather in northern Mexico. Uh, yesterday it came real nicely up into Laredo and gave a little bit of the valley some rain, but uh, not much. And certainly as far as we're concerned, it's we're too far away. This activity is rolling eastbound. It actually began in East Texas and now continues going this way. So it's almost into uh, New Orleans. For us, this is what we've got to deal with. Looking at 95, 97, 98, possibly we could hit the first 100 degree temperature of the season coming up by the weekend or close. Uh, we're looking partly cloudy, 91 in Port Lavaca. Uh, lots of sun, 93 in the Cuero area. And again, uh, the heat wave is on. Heat index 110, 110, and then dropping just a little bit because the humidity is going to drop, but it's still going to be very hot, and so you just got to be cautious. That's your seven-day forecast, reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that. Put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Cuddy now. Thank you, Matt. Coming up next on 25 News Now 5, we're going to take a look at your stocks. Plus, Boeing executives have met with the FAA to review their new safety plan.
Taking a look at your stocks, the Dow up 140 points, the S&P 500 up 8 points, and the Nasdaq up 28 points. Oil down 97 cents, closing at $73.25 per barrel. Thursday, Boeing executives spent three hours with the FAA reviewing the changes it is making to its production and safety procedures. Those changes included improving employee training, preventing suppliers from shipping defective components, and additional FAA audits. The FAA ordered Boeing to come up with the roadmap after two reviews in February found serious issues at the company. This all comes after a string of bad news for Boeing this year, most notably that mid-air door plug blowout on a months-old 737 MAX back in January. Now, Toyota has announced a recall over about 100,000 Tundra pickups and 3,500 Lexus LX600 SUVs for an engine issue. The automaker says the recall is to fix a problem that could cause the vehicle's engines to lose power while driving. In some vehicles, debris during manufacturing may have been left inside the engines. That could lead to rough running or sometimes an engine stalling. This recall only applies to regular gas-powered versions of these vehicles. Owners of the recalled vehicles will get a letter by the end of next month. And stay with us. We're going to take one last look at your forecast, plus an update to a viral story where a judge noticed a man driving during a virtual court hearing on a suspended license. Plus, here's a look at World News Tonight right after 25 News Now at 5. Coming up tonight, breaking news, President Biden taking drastic action on the U.S.-Mexico border. What this means, the dangerous and early heat wave. Cell phone service disrupted for millions tonight. In New York City, two young girls shot and wounded at a playground and a woman attacked by a bison at Yellowstone. Next.
viral story out of Michigan about a man with a suspended license who called into a court hearing while driving has a new update. Court documents revealed the man, Corey Harris, had already had his license suspension receded. They showed that Harris' license should have been reinstated actually in January of 2022. But the Michigan Secretary of State's office never actually received notice of the real ruling due to some errors. Harris spent two days in jail after the viral hearing and has called the whole situation very embarrassing. You know what? It was seems like there have been some miscommunications on both yeah, sides. Yeah, well, you know, it's all the amount of a letter that I didn't get that said I got a driver's license. Mm -hmm. I got to drive for work and I'm calling into court while I'm driving. Oh, tough. Hey. Did, you ever, did you see the video? Yes. It's a little silly. Pretty yeah. crazy. Pretty crazy. Well, crazy is the temperatures, folks. Uh, we're going to be pushing upper 90s. We may even see the first hundred of the season uh, out there sometime this weekend. So. Let me put it this way, even if it isn't 100 degrees, it's going to be so close uh, that you just have to sort of respect the heat, especially middle part of the day. That's when your body doesn't cool down properly. In the mornings, you'll be fine. In the evenings, you'll be fine. And if you need to cross the parking lot to go to HEB, you're going to be fine. It's just we don't want you to overdoing it in the middle part of the day. Middle part of the day, we're talking noon? Noon to maybe 2, 3 o'clock when it's really hot. That's when the temperature and the humidity are highest. And, uh, you know, some people's bodies will not be able to cool down. So we want you to prevent, if you start feeling a little, little woozy, a little lightheaded, just come on inside, take it easy. Mm -hmm. Or go, go get some ice cream. Yeah, stay hydrated. Yep. All righty, thank you, Mac. And thank you for being with us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 6. World News Tonight with David Muir is up next.